Hi there. Now in this tutorial, what I want to do is show you how we can sketch graphs that are of quadratic functions, where we use completing the square to help us sketch them. And by this, we'll be able to locate stationary points and also the equation of the line of the axis of symmetry. Now to be able to do this, I'm assuming that you're familiar with completing the square and also basic transformations of graphs. If not, then do check these tutorials out on my website. OK, well, if we take this first one, y equals x squared minus 8x plus 6. If we complete the square on this, remember that all we've got to do is just put in brackets here with an x here and square it. And what we do is we halve the coefficient of x. So the coefficient of x is minus 8, so we just halve that and that will be minus 4. And if you were to square this out, we get x squared minus 8x plus 16. But to get down to 6, I need to take off 10 off of that 16. Now that we've completed the square, we should be able to sketch this graph very easily. Because what we do is we think of the graph, I'll just put it here, we think of the graph f of x equals x squared. Now the graph of f of x equals x squared you should be familiar with. It's a parabola, something like this, passing through the origin. Now with this we're going to transform it. OK, we're going to transform it by considering the graph of f of x minus 4. That is, in other words, replacing any x here with x minus 4. So what we're going to get is x minus 4 all squared. And we should be familiar with this transformation for any graph. What it does is it translates our parabola, in this case, four units to the right parallel to the x-axis. So what we're going to get then is this graph is going to move four units across, say to there. So this point on the x-axis here we'll just label as 4. Now what we need to do next is to develop this equation here is to subtract 10. So if I subtract 10 now from both sides here, OK, minus 10, minus 10, what does subtracting 10 do to any graph? Well, when it's outside our function here, what it does is it translates the graph 10 units downwards, parallel to the y-axis. So if I take the graph here and pull it downwards, say by 10 units, well, it's going to move down, but where is it going to move down to? Is it going to cross the y-axis, say, above the origin? Or is it going to cut through the origin? Or maybe it's a bit lower? Well, before we just go casually sketching our graph in any position like this, we better find out where it does cross the y-axis. And to do that, we just need to substitute x equals 0 into either this equation or this equation, because any point on the y-axis, x is equal to 0. So if we put x equals 0 into this top one here, you'll find that y equals 6. If you put it into this one, 0 minus 4 just gives us minus 4. If you square it, you're going to get 16. Take away 10, 6. So either one, you're going to get 6. Now, the graph here clearly is cutting at a negative value. So what we've got to do is take our graph and just push it upwards, say. So it crosses, say, at 6 on the y-axis. So let's say, well, let's say there's about 6, OK? So we'll mark that in as that point is being 6. This is not drawn to scale, so uh, don't come back on me on that. It's just the principle of what's happening. We'll make those markers instead of green, we'll make them black, OK? So what are the coordinates of this point here? Well, remember, we took our graph. Let's just do it again. We took our graph, f of x equals x squared. We moved it four units to the right, and we then moved it 10 units down. So our stationary point here 
must have coordinates then at 4 minus 10. OK? And if we want to find the equation of the line of symmetry, well then that equation of line of symmetry is through here. Let's mark that in. If we come up through here, OK, it's going to go through the 4 there. And this equation is x equals 4. OK, well, I hope that's given you an idea on that one. Now, I've got another one here. And you'll notice that in this one, instead of just having x squared, I've got a 2 in front of it. It's still a positive x squared. So if you'd like to have a go at this one, completing the square is a little bit harder. But I'll give you a moment just to pause the video and have a go. You can always come back and check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, if you complete the square for this, OK, what we do is we pull out the 2 here. We'd have a bracket like so, and an x would go in here. Now, you've got to be careful with these ones. OK, we'll put a square there, by the way. You've got to be careful with these ones because it's no good just halving the coefficient of x and making that a 4. We've pulled out 2 as a common factor. So what we've got to do is divide this by 2, first of all. So that's going to be down to 4. And then we halve that coefficient. So halving 4 is going to be plus 2. Now, if you were to square this bracket out, you'd get x squared plus 4x plus 4. So timesing that with 2 would give you 2x squared plus 8x. And then 2 times the 4 would give you 8. So to get down to plus 1, you need to subtract 7. OK? Now, how do we build this curve up? Well, we build it up from f of x again, equaling x squared. But we replace any x with x plus 2. So we're looking at f of x plus 2. And this will give us then x plus 2 all squared. OK? So if we take our graph, our standard parabola for f of x equaling x squared, what we've got to do now is shift it two places, though, to the left, parallel to the x-axis. So if we take that graph and shift it two units to the left, let's say it takes us to that point there. So this point here, then, will be at minus 2. Let's just mark that on at minus 2. The next, we need to put a 2 here in front of x plus 2 all squared. So we need to multiply both sides here by 2. So if I multiply by 2, we're going to get this. Now, doubling a function gives us a stretch parallel to the y-axis of scale factor 2. And any point on the x-axis is invariant. It doesn't change. So what we're going to get is a curve looking something like this now. But this point, as I say, stays exactly the same. The next, we want to subtract 7. So if I subtract 7 from both sides here, OK, what does subtracting 7 do to any graph? Well, it's going to translate its 7 units downwards, OK, parallel to the y-axis. So if we take our graph now and drag it seven units down, again, where's it going to go? Is it going to cut the y-axis slightly above the origin, or maybe even at the origin, or below the origin? Well, again, we've got to just check this out by putting x equals 0 into our equation, because any point on the y-axis, x is equal to 0. So if we do that, if x is 0 and you put it into this top equation, we just get y is 1. If you put it into this one, you'll get 2 squared, which is 4, times the 2, which is 8. Take away the 7, again 1. So it doesn't matter which one of these two you put it into. So it crosses the y-axis at 1, not down here. So we need to take our curve then and just push it up a little bit more so that it's intersecting the y-axis above the origin. So I'll mark that point in here, that this point here then is at 1. And this point here is 
the point where we slid the curve two units to the left and seven units down. So it's got to be at minus two, minus seven. And as for the equation of the line of symmetry, that's going to be up through here. OK, so just mark that in there. And that is going to be the equation x equals minus 2. OK, well, I hope that's given you enough to be able to tackle that type of problem then. Now, in this video, I've only discussed the situation when our x squared term has been positive. Now, in the video that follows this, I'll look at what happens when we take x squared terms which are negative. Okay?